Alkyl halides are simply hydrocarbons that have one or more halogens attached to our carbon backbone. So let's begin by looking at the molecular formula for a monosubstituted alkyl halide. So here we have C subscript N, H subscript 2N plus 1X, where N is the number of carbons, 2N plus 1 is the number of H atoms, and X is one of your four possible halogens. So it's either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So let's begin by looking at the nomenclature rules for our alkyl halides. In other words, what rules do we have to follow when we're naming compounds that contain halogens? So, let's look at the following four rules. Rule number one, names are assigned based on the longest straight chain of carbons containing that halogen. Rule number two, the number value or the position value for the halogen must be minimized. Rule number three, multiple substituents are ordered alphabetically. In other words, bromine comes before chlorine because B comes before C in the alphabet. And rule number four, a double bond takes precedence over the halogen when assigning number values for your position on the backbone, on the carbon backbone. So, let's look at the following four examples. So in example number one, we're essentially using rules one and two. So we want to find the longest possible carbon backbone such that our bromine has the lowest possible position value. So instead of starting from this end, we must start counting from this end. So one carbon, two carbon, three, four, five, six carbons. So that means we have a hexane because we don't have any double or triple bonds. So one bromo means we have the bromine on the first position. So one bromo hexane. Example two, once again, we're taking into consideration rules one and two. We start from this end because of rule two. One, two chloro, three, four, five. 2-chloropentane, so we have an alkane, 5-carbon alkane, so we say pentane, 2-chloropentane. So, example 3, now we're taking into consideration the first three rules. So, multiple substituents are ordered alphabetically. So, because of rule 2, we start from this end, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that gives us a hexane. We have an alkane, six carbon alkane, so hexane. And bromo comes before chloro. So two bromo, four chlorohexane. Now, the last example. Now we have to take all four rules into consideration. So remember, whenever we have a double bond in our compound, as we do here, the position value for the double bond takes precedence over the position value for our bromine, our halogen. So, that means we start from this end and not from this end. So, one, two, on our second position we have two things. We have a methyl group and we have our double bond. Now, bromine will come before methyl because B comes before M, according to our rule three. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So that means we have four bromo, two methyl, two pentene. So two pentene simply means our double bond is on the second carbon and we have one, two, three, four, five carbon alkene. Now four bromo means we have our bromine in the fourth position and bromo comes before methyl. So two methyl is on the second position and we're done. So now let's examine the structure of our alkyl halide. So let's take the simplest alkyl halide that has a methyl attached to our halogen. So this halogen, once again, can be one of the four different types of halogen. So either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Now let's examine this covalent bond. Let's remember what electronegativity is. Electronegativity is the ability of our, of our atoms to attract electrons. So the higher the electronegativity of the atom, the more likely the electrons will be attracted to the nucleus of that atom. And what are some periodic trends? Well, as we go up, 
our group, as we go from iodine to fluorine, what happens to our electronegativity? Well, it increases, and that means out of all the halogens, fluorine is the most electronegative, and iodine is the least electronegative. So, what does that say about our carbon X bond? Well, the covalent bond between the carbon and the halogen is polar because of a difference in electronegativity between carbon and the halogen. In other words, as we go down the group of halogens, our atomic radius increases and electronegativity decreases. And this means if our nucleus gets larger and less electronegative, what will happen to the bond length? Well, the bond length will increase, and when electrons get further away in the bond, that means our bond strength will decrease. So, this means that the bond strength will decrease while the bond length will increase. And let's compare the bond length and strength for all of our carbon-halogen bonds. So, notice that for bond strength, our carbon-fluorine bond is the strongest. It takes 115 kilocals per mole of energy to break our bond, one mole of CF while it only takes 58 kilocals per mole of energy to break the CI bond. So that means this bond is much stronger, it's held much more strongly because of the pull of, these floor, of this fluorine. The fluorine is very electronegative and so it will pull the electrons closer. Now, let's look at the bond length. So, notice that now the CI bond is the longest, while the CF bond is the shortest. And once again, that makes sense because as electronegativity increases, our bond length decreases, and that's exactly what happens here.